When the headlines say people died in Gaza, it breaks my heart because people didn't choose to die. People were killed, they were massacred at the hands of snipers. Their own testimonies and the testimony of Hamas, the terrorist organization that the people of Gaza voted into government, proclaims them as choosing to die when they voluntarily make themselves shaheeds, martyrs, making a mockery of true martyrdom. <laughs> Hamas has already openly stated that those who were killed were predominantly active members of its own terrorist organization. If the last mission was 62 soldiers, yes. One of them was 50 soldiers from Hamas. Ms. Sarsour is right. They didn't choose to die. Any more than any soldier, shaheed, who puts himself on the front lines in warfare, chooses to die. These individuals were actively engaging in what in any other context would be considered warfare. The majority of the media coverage on what's happening in Palestine and Gaza is very problematic. It talks about two sides, clashes, people dying, but that's not actually the reality. The people of Gaza, the Palestinians of Gaza, do not have access to snipers or tanks or airplanes. You're right, Ms. Sarsour. Hamas, you know, that terrorist organization that the people of Gaza voted into government, they don't have tanks or warplanes, and there's a good reason for that. No, they take the humanitarian aid that Israel voluntarily gives them, concrete for constructing new homes, the billions of dollars that they've received in international aid, and they funnel it into creating terror tunnels with the open intent of murdering Jews after they tunnel underneath the Israeli security fence. They use this international aid to create bombs and rockets which they indiscriminately fire upon Israeli citizens, openly and proudly proclaiming that this is their intent to kill Israeli civilians. <laughs> Gaza's shamelessly open and publicly admitted aim to destroy Israel and murder Jews, that's the reason they don't have planes and tanks, Ms. Sarsour. And you know that. But you agree with their aims. These are a people who have been living under an 11-year siege. This means that the borders are closed off. Israel are a people who have been living under Arab Islamic persecution for nearly 2,000 years. And ever since they succeeded to reestablish their own sovereignty in their homeland, they have ceaselessly been under siege by Arab Islamic terrorist organizations, including those which you, Ms. Arsour, support for the last 70 years. There is no going into Gaza and there's no leaving Gaza. The blockade on Gaza only occurred two years after it was given independence created by Israel. There was no blockade before. They were put under a blockade after they chose to establish Hamas, an international terrorist organization, as their government. Thereupon which Hamas proceeded to indiscriminately fire rockets upon Israeli civilians. The blockade on Gaza is 100% necessary, just, and righteous. To oppose the blockade on Gaza, that is what is unjust. That is the promotion of indiscriminate killing. Miss Sarsour, but of course, indiscriminate killing is okay when it's Jews. That the blockade on Gaza is not merely a blockade enforced by Israel, but also by Egypt, which Gaza shares a border with as well. Even the Palestinian Authority has instituted policies against Hamas-ruled Gaza because the extent of its terrorism, even against other Palestinians in Gaza, is too great even for the terroristic Palestinian Authority. Gaza had the right and still has the right to decide who enters into Gaza, just as Israel and Egypt have the right to decide who enter into their borders. The people of Gaza had a right to enter into Israel with a visa, just like numerous other countries, until they elected 
a terrorist organization as their government, which then began raining rockets upon Israel. So yes, it makes sense that there's greater limitation on who can enter into Israel from Gaza. And again, you only make it a matter of Israel and not Egypt or any other country that puts Gaza under a special status, including the United States. No, it's just Israel. You're the definition of a Judeophobe. Yet despite all this, Israel continues to provide on a monthly basis many thousands of tons of aid, food, and medical supplies into Gaza freely. Israel, which you constantly demonize. Is Egypt doing that? Are other Arab Islamic countries doing that for the people of Gaza that you so love? No. Israel also takes in tens of thousands of Gazans at this very moment for medical treatment, free medical treatment. Investing in peace. This, Ms. Sarsour, is what is called a religion of peace. But apparently, Arab Islamic fascists have a different definition of the word peace. The only peace you know are pieces of innocence shattered into pieces, butchered by those who you defend. And many UN-based organizations and human rights organizations have called Gaza the world's largest open-air prison. Gaza is not an open prison camp. What prison camp has international borders and control of who comes into it? If Gaza is a prison, it's their own elected government, Hamas, that holds them hostage. And if the people of Gaza want freedom, they have to rise up and overthrow Hamas, the government that they elected, and all the other terrorist organizations, which are the true reason why a just blockade is imposed upon Gaza by both Israel and Egypt. But it's much easier to just blame the Jews. The truth is, however, that Gaza is no more an open-air prison than any other strict Islamic country. People have a right to protest. They were met with aggression and snipers that have killed over 50 people in one day, over a hundred in the last six weeks. Yes, Ms. Arsou, people have a right to peaceful protest, but myriads among them were also filmed by multiple witnesses, readily available on the internet throwing bombs at the Israeli border and at the Israeli guards on the Israeli side, throwing bombs at them. Waving machetes, openly declaring their desire and intent to butcher Jewish civilians. And this you defend? This you call a peaceful protest? Don't insult our intelligence. It's enough that you already insult your own.